Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make um, a DIY reusable wipe. Um, this is specifically with makeup in mind. There's lots of other uses for wipes, um, you know, to place them for toilet paper, as napkins, as general tissues. Um, these are ones that I use for makeup, so I'm going to show you the fabric combination that I use for that. Uh, I like to use uh, minky and flannel because the minky is really soft against your skin, um, very gentle, so you can kind of get into the tough areas, you know, remove eye makeup and that type of thing. And then flannel on the other side, just as um, I use flannel for the kind of last cleanup, anything that the minky didn't get, I can go in and kind of um, exfoliate a little bit, for lack of a better word. What I like to do is, instead of buying disposable makeup wipes, I like to pair it with um, micellar water, which is, you know, um, makeup removal solution, I guess. And what I do is I put it into a spray bottle, and then I spray it onto the minky side of the wipe, um, get the whole thing wet, and then, you know, remove all my makeup. And I follow up with this, you know, if I need to wash my face a second time, I can do that, but I use the wipe for the kind of first removal. So basically, it's a pr pretty simple um, process to turn on top stitch. Um, I'm just going to show you, you know, how I cut the fabric and then sew it together. So I have a template here that I made. Um, I made it, I guess, a while ago to make cloth napkins because I use kind of the same shape. Um, and basically, I like to have a fairly sizable wipe, so um, this is, I think is meant to be approximately 8 by 8 yeah, about 8 by 8 finished. So this template is um, 8 and a half by 8 and a half square, but then the t I have a, an extra turn tab here, and the turn tab is about 2 and a half inches wide um, and half an inch from the edge to give you enough um, fabric to close the hole when you turn it. So I'm basically just going to um, place the template on the fabric, cut out um, one piece on the flannel, one piece on the minky, and then sew it together. One thing to note is, uh, obviously if you're using a natural fiber, you definitely don't have to use minky, you could use um, you know, bamboo flannel, bamboo fleece, any, anything like that. Um, you want to pre-wash it, because you know, obviously you're going to be washing this after you use this, so you want to be able to want to be sure that it's not going to shrink after you wash it. Um, but if you use a minky or any other polyester fabric, you do not need to pre-wash it. Um, and don't pre-wash minky because it will fray in the washing machine because the cut edges will fray. So you definitely want to make sure the minky is sewn up before you wash it. Okay, so I'm just going to, hopefully I can show this on camera, um, set up the template and cut it out. This is just like a piece of um, tie-dye flannel that I got from Joanne's. Oh, one thing you want to do is cut the template, um, I think on the right side. Yeah, because you want to make sure that the, you want to make sure that the um, tabs line up. The tabs have to be on the correct, on the correct side of both pieces of fabric. So you want, you want to, you're going to sew the fabric right sides together. So you want to, um, if I, I'm going to do the flannel for this, so I'm going to have the, if the notch is on the right side, on the left side of the flannel, sorry, it needs to be on the left side of the minky. So right now the flannel is right side up um, with the turn space on the left. And then I'm going to have to do the same thing with the minky, but with the minky is going to be right side down um, with the uh, template on the wrong side of it and then the notch here. So hopefully that makes sense to me. Just go through slowly and then it will make something new constructed. Okay, so again, flannel is right side up. So I the template is cut as eight and a half by eight and a half for mine, so that gives me the option to use a half an inch seam allowance if I want the finish size to be eight by eight. Um, I'm not actually too fussy about that. I, I'm okay with it coming out a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. But keep that in mind. Um, if you want to use a quarter inch seam allowance, you would cut it at um, eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter, and, but still leave the same amount of space for the turn hole. So two and a half inches wide this way, and then half an inch this way. Give you enough room to close it. Sorry, this is. The harder to do than I think I must have used my scissors last time. One more edge here. 
And these are just for me to use, so I, I'm not really um, too concerned about them being perfect. I just want to get the general size and shape. Okay, so that is the funnel done. Right, so I have a roughly square piece with a turn tab there. And again, so the minky has to be, it's gonna be, they're gonna be sewn right sides together, right? So we're gonna make sure the turn tab is on the right side. So the minky has to go down like this, right? This, this is the wrong side of the minky, this is the right side of the minky. As like, you know, it's like, um, I mean, it's meant to kind of feel like, I guess, mink fur, but you know, it's polyester, it's not, it's totally begun. Um, okay, so the minky will be right side down. Right, so I'm gonna just move this out of the way, move the fan out of the way. And put the template onto the minky with the turn tab facing left like it was on the final so that when they're right sides together, the tabs will line up. Okay, um, I'm gonna get as close to the edge as possible so I don't have to do two cuts. Uh, minky tends to be a little bit messy, so just keep that in mind. So we now have both pieces cut out, roughly in the right shape. Um, so I'm going to put the funnel back down here, minky on top, let the turn tabs line up close enough. Okay. So now we'll just clip it, open it together and take it to the sewing machine and start on one end, sew all the way around, come back, come back, stop on this end and make sure to backstitch at the beginning. And the end. So I'm going to pause and get back, get to the sewing machine, and then I'll show you how I sew it together. Okay, so I'm at the sewing machine now. I pinned the two pieces together, right sides together, with the tabs matching up, obviously. Um, I'm just going to use a straight stitch. What well, I think, whatever default length on the machine is fine um, for this, because this is just going to be hidden anyway. I'm just going to sew all the way around, back stitching at the beginning and the end. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I cut it pretty big and um, use about a half an inch in my allowance because my edges are not matching up as nicely as I would have liked. So, uh, I'm sewing minky side up, although I don't think it matters um, all that much. I'm just trying to try find me. This is a fairly new machine to me and I keep losing my half inch miles. Okay, there we go. So lining it up, you want to start at the um, at one side of the turn tab, so you can start and stop here. Okay, okay. there we go. Oh, I put a just one other thing. I put um a knit needle in because this seems pretty stretchy to me, but. I don't know how necessary that is, strictly speaking. Always make sure your needle is in the down position before you turn a corner. So I'm back now on the other side of the turn tab, you can see there, so I'm going to backstitch and then take it off the machine, trim the seams, um, and then turn it inside, right side out and top stitch it. So here we go. Okay, so I'm about to trim the seams before I turn it right side out. Um, <laughs> to be honest, it didn't sew up as neatly as I was hoping, but I think it's just because my fabric ended up shifting. But you know, you basically, you can see from the seam that it's basically a square shape, um, and we have enough fabric at the turn space to close the hole properly. So I'm going to trim it up. Um, I'm using pink and shares, but you can use any scissors you have, and then turn it right side out. So. You one thing you want to make sure to do is to trim the corners. You want these to be pretty much cut all the way off. Um, I'm going to use regular scissors for that actually. So you always want to, don't trim into your stitches, but trim 
much fabric as possible off of the corners because then you'll, it'll turn a little bit neater. And trim all four corners first. Using my pink and shears. Pink and shears are, um, they have this zigzag blade and that usually helps the fabric stop fraying and it just um is good for cutting curves too especially because on a curve getting rid of the bulk of the fabric helps it to kind of fold in better so that's why I use pink and shears a lot for trimming seams. I get to the turn space here. I don't want to trim the turn space fabric, so I'm just gonna stop right where the stitches end and then come in this way. And then before I turn it, I'm just gonna have the um I'm just gonna trim the turn the turn space just a tiny bit so that the flaps are at the same length. So I'm gonna use my rosary cutter for that. Just just trim it trim off the excess here where they don't line up exactly. Okay. Okay, so now to turn it um I just wanna get a I have a chopstick I'm going to use to help me turn out the corners a little better. I'm just going to reach in, grab a corner, and turn it. The, the turn hole is pretty big, so it should be fairly easy to turn it. And I'm going to use the chopstick to get the corners out. Sorry. You could iron it at this point. Um, once you turn it off, then you, before you top stitch it, uh, only use the iron on the cotton side or the, whatever natural fiber you're using. I wouldn't recommend iron in the minky. Um, so you probably want to use a relatively low satin anyway. I'm not gonna iron it just because I I can manage without ironing. I think you just may not be the neatest. Okay, so there we go. We have a nice square square um wipe. So now we're gonna just go back to the machine. Make sure that the turn tab is, you know, all the way in. You could put a pin there or a clip just to keep it closed, but um, actually, yeah, we'll, I'll put a clip on it. This is just like a quilt and clip. And then they're easier to use in pins. Okay, so I'm just going to smooth it out. Again, you can just give it a quick press. It'll, be, it'll help and make it a little bit easier going through the machine. But we're just going to stitch all the way around. Um, you can change that longer stitch length if you want, not really necessary. Um, and then, you know, back stitch at the beginning and the end, and it's pretty simple. So I'm going to reposition to the machine again, and I'll show you how I top stitch it. I brought the camera a little closer this time, I think it should be easier to see. Um, so the main thing you want to figure out here is, given based on the size of your turn tab, you want to make sure that you have the needle in a position that catches, um, that actually secures the hole closed. So because I have a fairly big turn tab, it's about half an inch wide from you know from edge to where the fabric ends in here. I have some room to play with, um, but I'm probably just going to use the edge of my presser foot as the guide, and that I know is going to be um, narrow enough that I will 100% close the stitch hole, close the turn hole. Sorry. So I don't necessarily start at the turn hole. I'm just going to start a little bit ahead of it. Probably it doesn't really matter where you do that. I am going to switch to a slightly longer stitch length. Um, I, I mean, I'm using a three point five. I yeah, I'm I have a new machine now, so I'm just kind of learning what all these stitches mean. But okay. my old machine was pretty basic. Okay, so I'm just going to I'm lining up the edge of the wipe with the edge of the presser foot and that's going to keep be my guide for the whole process. I'm just going to back stitch, needle down. That was about three stitches back and then I'm just going to sew around the edge.
So I'm back, I'm always back in the beginning. So I'm going to stitch over where I started and then back stitch again to close. Okay, so that is the finished wipe. I mean, we just move my camera again and take a look at the final product. Okay, so here is the finished wipe. Um, I apologize if the video is a little long, but you know, it will be basically how long it took in real time, which is not very long, maybe 15 minutes to finish it. Um, so here we go. We have Minky on one side, file on the other, turn on top stitched. Um, very simple to make um, on a home sewing machine. I made, I don't, I don't know, probably like eight or 10 um, from probably less than half a yard of Minky and less than half a yard of flannel. So altogether it's pretty inexpensive. Definitely a lot cheaper than buying disposable makeup wipes. So I hope that was helpful. Um, thanks for watching and please let me know if you have any questions. Bye.